Steve, we gotta get out of here. We gotta get down. Get in the hallway, Karen. Get in the hallway. Strong storms turning into tragedy Friday. This is a Doppler 9 and 10 weather bulletin. Good afternoon, Northern Michigan. We were talking about that spin up that we were seeing in the upper atmosphere with those winds just about 10, 15 minutes ago. Mm -hmm. uh, this tornado is heading towards the Gaylord area. They have actually now just switched it over to Otsego County as it is continuing to move northeast at about 55 miles per hour. It is moving rather quickly. An EF3 tornado ripping through Gaylord, a community known as the gateway to Northern Michigan. We all just kind of was like, oh, it's a warning. Sometimes you don't take that really serious. This kind of storm, so rare, they don't even have tornado sirens. One touching down, leaving destruction in its wake and a community in mourning. Um, this is an extreme weather event. There was not a lot of notice. Some people were able to, to take cover, but some were in harm's way and they may yet still be in harm's way considering the, the structural damage that, that we're seeing. Cars crushed, homes destroyed, businesses ripped apart, and two people killed. Over 40 others injured, and countless lives turned completely upside down. First responders acting quickly, searching through the rubble. We were searching for places that we knew the occupants. You know, we, we were calling them out by name, trying to see if they were still in their damaged homes. Cleanup efforts now underway with the community left changed forever. Family, friends, strangers this is a community effort and it's amazing to see. Now, generations that have come in and we're getting constant texts and emails and Facebook messages. What can we bring? What do you need? How can we help? Northern Michigan coming together to help and the Gaylord community showing their resilience. From the second the, the rain stopped falling, the community was out looking to, to help out and pitch in. This special edition of The Four starts now. Tornado warned storm right here for Otsego County. Clear, 32 and murder tornado on the ground in the city. 1547. We have a major tornado strike here. Thanks so much for joining us for this special edition of The Four. I'm Xavier Hershevitz alongside meteorologist Michael Stevens. We're here live in Gaylord out in front of what was the Goodwill store before that EF3 tornado ripped through downtown Gaylord on Friday. It's been really difficult seeing the images we've seen here in the last couple of days. You were here Friday night, Michael. I was here on Saturday. We spent the day here. Mm -hmm. This is a community working to rebuild. It really is. Uh, I mean, Friday when we broke the, the tornado warning and we watched on the radar as it went through Gaylord, raced up here and just a little bit, you can see the path as it went right this to the northeast. And we were out today kind of seeing how everybody was mm -hmm. working and functioning on this Monday. And the community, I, I, I could not believe it. I mean, everybody is yeah. doing what they can. It doesn't matter who it was. They were in there, someone's yard, chainsawing trees, putting the woods and all the t trees and twigs and everything on the side of the road. Anybody with a trailer was coming by, loading that trailer and then getting everything cleaned up. And it's efforts like that through the Gaylord community that we saw, we saw a whole classroom out there today yeah. doing the same thing. And within two days, they had power back up. Uh, here, like it, the Goodwill, this is Plan 9 being restored very quickly. Uh, it's just crazy to see just how community, the Gaylord community has come together so quickly um, and working so hard to get everything cleaned up. And one of the things we've talked a lot about is, you know, we saw the images like you did coming in on Friday when we were live on the air as this tornado yeah. touched down. But I think I speak for both of us. When we got here and we actually saw it firsthand, it's really hard to put into words when you see it in real life. It I really mean, is. This, this is a store. There's a sign on the side that says this is a good place. This is a Goodwill store. This is shingles. Shingles, and the only thing that we can make from the shingle is it's from Jimmy John's 400 yards street. that way. So it's it, it kind of, it really humanizes you very quickly when you see the, the path of destruction yeah. and where it reaches. Jeremy, I don't know if you can kind of zoom out here and see. These are vehicles behind us that clearly were not parked that way when they yes. came to the Goodwill store. That was the wind that pushed them and blew the windows out there. There's another vehicle on this other side. 
There's pieces of the roof here. All the windows, for the most part, at the Goodwill completely destroyed. Jeremy, I don't know if you can pan all the way over to That's the a side. Quaker state. That oil was change, an yeah. oil chain shop. On Which, Friday. And all the workers, uh, we were told, as soon as they saw the tornado coming, jumped down in the oil, uh, the, where they service the oil, down and below, and that saved them. They were able to walk out because they were below ground, and they were able to escape after the fact. And then even over here at Little Caesars, you can see the pieces of Goodwill sticking through the wall. Right into the wall there. And, and another 150 vehicle. mile an hour winds. I mean, that shows mm. you just it took a piece of metal from Goodwill and stuck it into that plaster. Um, I mean, deep, too. So... Um, it just kind of shows you how quickly and swiftly this tornado came through, but all the destruction and how Gaylord is now coming together. And not just, I mean, everyone around Gaylord, Michigan yeah. in general. There's so many people from around here that's come up here to help. And we have a lot of information with people that want to help regarding that here throughout the fort. And so if you're wondering what are some of the ne things people need here, I want you to take a second and think about this. Imagine you wake up, your home's destroyed, and you have nothing left. What do you need to survive that day? We have a list here of some of the immediate needs. Totes. One of the big things a lot of people here need are totes. That's because they're going to go to their homes, they're going to pick up the things they have left, whatever it is, pictures, whatever they can find left in their tornado ravaged homes and put them in the tote. And when you take a second and you think about that, it's just, it's heartbreaking it's to very, think about. Very. They also need gas cards. You don't, I don't have to tell you the price of gas right now is astronomical. These are people now that are not just dealing with losing their homes. Now they have to get somewhere. Yep. They have to get to shelter. They have to get places. Not to mention commuting back and forth or even towing things for yeah. people. So, I mean, there's a lot of gas involved. Gas cards, cleaning supplies, hand, face, body, any sort of cleansing wipes. They say that's a big need right now. First aid kits, food gift cards, work gloves. That's because a lot of these homes, yes. as we've seen the damage here behind us, a lot of people's homes look like that too. And they need those work gloves so they can sort through the items they need. I, I We were here all day and I took two hours to kind of walk around to a few blocks that way and there was two uh, ladies that were lifting up a tree essentially and putting it in their trailer and I, I ran over there I was like can I help you and they're like for sure and the work gloves are true because it was yeah. it's very you know it's labor intensive work but they're loading it loading it and for an hour we loaded that and they took off and I continued to walk around to where the municipal park was where this tornado came through so anything that you would just think on a daily basis of one yeah I, Hygi you know, hygiene products, uh, yeah. as well as uh, anything to protect yourself from things that you're going to clean up. Metal, sharp pieces of glass, anything to keep yourself safe mm -hmm. because we're going to be uh, cleaning up here a little bit through, through the community. You're going to want to take those, those items to the Otsego County United Way office. We have their address and their information on our website, 9and10news.com. Michael, you were here Friday night in the aftermath. Was. I was here Saturday morning. One of the hardest hit places by this storm was Nottingham Forest. That's a mobile home park not too far from where we're standing no, today. About a quarter of a mile. The chief of the chief of the fire department here in Otsego County said on Saturday that it was 95% destroyed. I, I, we have some drone video that photojournalist Josh Monroe took earlier. I want to take. I want you to take a look at this. It is breathtaking. I spent a little bit of time there yesterday, and it is hard to put into words Very the much. weight of the devastation there. These are people's homes. Their entire belongings scattered all over the mobile home park and the field nearby. We went by this afternoon and uh, we stopped uh, and saw people were picking through the rubble. What was left for them to grab? And it is an extremely emotional uh, just feeling that rushes yeah. over you because imagine going back to your home that it's just absolutely gone. What do you grab? What do what, you get? What's there? What is left? And right. how far did, did what I want fly, fly away? away? You know, That's I was when I was there yesterday, I talked to a young man off camera whose mom was home and lives in Nottingham, mm -hmm. Nottingham Forest Mobile Home Park. Hit, luckily, her home was not as bad as the rest. But he just right. he kept saying to me, this is my community yeah. to see my community like this, you know, and there's so many people this afternoon that are dealing with the mental aspects of Very this. Big. This is an extremely traumatic event for everyone that witnessed this and everyone that lives in this community. Nine and 10's Chelsea Dickens, she's live at the United Methodist Church in Gaylord, where people are working to meet the mental health needs of the community. Chelsea? 
Michael and Xavier, therapists to counselors, pastors, and social workers are all on standby in Gaylord this week to provide services to people who might be experiencing some trauma from Friday's tragedy or might even find themselves just wanting to talk to somebody. Jessie Thompson is a clinical social worker in Gaylord. She'll be providing free services to people who need help at the United Methodist Church in Gaylord. She says that trauma can come in a variety of ways, and sometimes the symptoms or what people are experiencing are hard to find. There's no right way to feel. It's unexpected. We aren't prepared for stuff like this. And the highest, you know, the most at risk in our population are our kids because they don't have the understanding. They don't have the, um, their brains are still developing. Thompson says that for kids who might struggle with trying to express themselves through words, parents and guardians might notice changes in behavior or might even notice the child drawing what they're feeling. This is behavior that is normal for children who have gone through this experience. Coming up at 5 and at 6, we'll have more on resources that are available for people that have experienced trauma or, again, people who just might need someone to talk to after the tragic events we experienced here in Gaylord on Friday. Xavier and Michael. Such an important aspect of this story. Chelsea, thank you. I want to turn now to one of the first responders who helped really address the situation as it happened on Friday. We have Gaylord City Police Chief Frank Clays here with us. Chief, thanks so much for being with us. I just kind of want to start with a, a, a kind of a general question. I think so many people in northern Michigan are wondering, how is Gaylord doing this afternoon? I think it's it's much better. You know, um, I think we're we're starting to get ourselves put back together. We have, uh, for the most part, things restored in the areas that weren't directly impacted. You know, we have we have power back on for 95 percent or better. Um, you know, we're we're getting that the the phone lines, the cable lines, everything is getting back up and running. Uh, most of the businesses now that were not directly impacted, uh, you know, are, are back up and open and, and everything uh, is starting to get back to normal as much as possible. And one of the big things is I talked to you at the Emergency Operations Center on Friday and uh, you really, really brought the community into it. It was like commu the community is going to really rebuild quickly and you saw that today. I mean, everybody is out uh, with trailers doing as much as possible and you, uh, I was talk we were talking earlier this uh, afternoon where everybody just had a line of trailers going through, picking up and hauling away, and it was it's just a quick response for everybody in this community coming together. Yeah, it's really it's really pretty inspirational. You know, when you see um, northern Michigan people, um, you know, you can take it from you know the county and the city level, yeah. the outpouring in the, in the northern Michigan people showing up, um, the state of Michigan showing up, and even people throughout the Midwest. We've had people from Pennsylvania, Ohio, mm -hmm. Indiana, Illinois, all coming in to help, um, showing up with you know. Uh, small tractors and, and chainsaws and, and trailers and just racing to haul debris yeah. away. I saw that through a lot of yards today. It wasn't even their house. They were just their chainsaws. Complete strangers. Complete strangers. Complete strangers. Yeah. Complete strangers. Yeah, taking just taking roofs. trees for yeah. them. Yesterday, awesome. I was somewhere and this lady was helping another clean up. And halfway through cleaning up, she said, what's your name? I mean, that's really the yeah, way that this true. community has responded to this. Of course, you and your team and so many of the first responders here in Otsego County, you were really the first boots on the ground. You guys had to go into many of these things. Just take us inside that process because not only are you going to rescue people, these are your neighbors. Yeah. These are your kids' soccer coaches. You know, you yeah, knew for, who you were searching for. For sure. You know, in, in the short run, it was very chaotic. We didn't even know what parts of the city had been impacted. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we were very fortunate. We were at shift change, so we had twice as many officers as we would normally have to throw at the problem. So, you know, as we were watching the storm um, come in, we quickly formulated our plan and the second it was stopped, we had spread out to those areas that we thought were impacted. Um, and we quickly realized, you know, it was, you know, pretty, pretty worst case scenario. Right. Um, our officers started searching building to building, you know, kind of like you had said, they, they, were, they were some of the homes that were, we knew the occupants, you know, we were calling them out by name, searching for them. Um, it's it's a different feeling when that's the case, you know. You you know who you're expecting to find, yeah. but hoping not to. So we, you know, a after that point, at some point, um, I had to remove myself and go to the command post, and and we set up operations from that way, and that's when we started getting you know resources from all over northern Michigan. On a personal level, Chief, what's it like for you to see your community like this? You know. 
it's it's pretty it's pretty devastating. But watching the storm come in and seeing what happened, mm -hmm. um, as terrible as it's been in the loss of life that we've had and the injuries, we all recognize all of us officers that this could have been a much worse event. Um, you know, had there not been the, the warning through the code red system, had had we not just got s some level of good luck, despite how this looks, um, it would have easily been. You know, town was very busy at 3:45. Um, I'm sure you could see in the videos that have been posted. This this whole road was backed up with traffic. Yeah, yeah. You know, it could have easily been a situation where our, our numbers could be a lot higher than than what they are. It's just one of those very rare events for northern michigan it was 3:30, mm -hmm. 85 degrees on a friday in gaylord michigan where this is the gateway to the north sure. everyone's getting out of work everyone's out and about schools soon releasing it was just a worst case time for this to happen um i, I want to ask you about the drone footage because it was something that is to see if you ever get the opportunity but what was mm -hmm. going through your head when you got the first aerial footage of what happened to basically Gaylord. I mean, it went to the northeast and then kind of went east right into some neighborhoods. Yeah, it really it really landed just uh, just outside of the city and cut a, a two-block path all the way across the city. Yeah. You know, it, it uh, it's pretty overwhelming it to really see, was, you know, yeah. and, and the more people, you know, had their um, cell phone videos that they shot um, and, and you saw other things that you just couldn't quite believe you're seeing uh, over things that you drive by every day and yeah. you see it's your community yeah, right. to see, you know, a, a chunk of roof that you know, is is the size of a, a whole home's roof fly over buildings that you drive by every day is pretty remarkable. It's, it's really crazy to see, and this is gonna be, take some time for Gaylord to rebuild, but for we sure. can tell from the community is resilient, and you guys are already, one day really, by yeah. day, yeah. hour yeah. by hour, minute by minute, working to rebuild. Chief Place, thank you so much for being with us. Absolutely, thank you. Thank you. We'll let you get back to your important work. Thank you. you do wanna take a moment here to mention, if you're wondering, how can I help at home? Well, the Otsego County, Community Foundation has put together a tornado tornado relief fund. You'll have the information there on your screen. You can call the number if you want to learn more. Write a check 989-731-0597. Of course, that information is also on our website 9and10news.com. Much more ahead this hour in this special edition of the four with live from the devastation in Gaylord. Stay with us. Welcome back to the special edition of The Four, live from Gaylord, just days after an EF3 tornado ripped through town, destroying homes, businesses, and even killing two people. It's been difficult to see the destruction here, but one of the things that has really, I think, brightened everyone in the community is the way in which people have responded, not just here in Gaylord, not just in Otsego County, but really all over the state and the country. Two of the people that have been on the forefront of responding to this crisis here, we have Megan Hacker here with us with the Otsego County United Way and Brian Gerstenberger with E-Free Church. Brian, I kind of want to start with you. Yeah. Immediately after that tornado hit, you all at E-Free Church jumped into action and really became a shelter for people over the over the weekend. Yeah, we we didn't get touched by the tornado, so we still had power, we had Wi-Fi, we had, we had showers. We knew that there was going to be some kind of response that was needed so as soon as we figured found out and it was safe to travel we were out on the roads in the church making sure everything was on and then from there it just kind of it, it kind of just organically climbed into this thing to uh, we were there within probably got started within an hour yeah of, of uh, after the the tornado hit and then uh maybe an hour later red cross was there united way was there and it was just yeah. a, a great partnership really it's what is what it ended up being a, a community coming together yeah Absolutely. and i understand now things have kind of shifted to bringing donations away from e-free church to you all at that Seagull county united way building what do you guys need right now oh gosh we've had a lot of support and a lot of love come in from all over the state um, right now we're asking if you wanted to make a donation a physical item donation to give us a call first to see where we're at with that uh, it seems to be that the needs are changing every couple hours so yeah. We're going through a lot of baby products, cleaning supplies, garbage bags. Um, we're looking for totes. People really need those totes to pack up their belongings and bring them home. Um, but, but give us a shout, 989-732-8929, um, before you bring things in. And to be fully honest, one of the biggest things we're looking for right now is some monetary support yeah. uh, because our funds are discretionary. So we can help folks. Uh, I had a guy in my office this morning, the tornado blew his car windows out. He only has PLPD. So we're gonna help get his car windows replaced so he can keep getting to work. Um, we've replaced some eyeglasses today that went missing, cell phones, so people can contact their loved ones. So those monetary donations, because we're giving them out in gas cards so people can get back and forth, um, gas for tractors, for chainsaws, all those things, and yeah. then groceries. 
because not only the people that were affected directly by the tornado, but everybody that lost power lost a lot of food and some other supplies in their homes. So those, those things have been really helpful. And it, it's really, uh, you know, I mentioned it earlier. Think about if you woke up and you had nothing in your home anymore. That's really the reality of what so many people here in Gaylord are dealing with. Brian, I understand that E Free Church, the shelter is not open anymore now, right? You guys have, have no the closed, the, uh, the Red Cross is still We're still, still there, there okay. uh, sheltering. Uh, I know the first night we had uh, nine, the next night we had eleven to twelve folks there, and and there's still some folks there, so it's going to stay open. It's kind of on a day to day basis okay. right now. Um, I, I just had a meeting with them before we came over, so the the shelter is still there, providing food. So if anybody needs hot food, there's breakfast, lunch, and dinner uh, at the at the church. Yep. What has the response been like, Megan? I mean, we've oh. heard from people all over the country, even, that are, are touched by this, have seen what happened, and want to help. It's, I have to imagine it's been overwhelming. To be, completely only, to be completely honest, the only tears I've cried have been tears of pride yeah, that our sure. community. We had people showing up yesterday from Holland, Grand Rapids, Saginaw, Lansing, all over the state to bring donations. We had folks come down from Canada with donations. and. The support that we've gotten from the entire state has really reminded us that we're not in this alone and that we're not facing this by ourselves. This, the people that came in from all sorts of different cities just to help us clean up has given us so much hope yeah. and so much yeah. just this sense of love and support and we couldn't be more grateful. Yeah. I was talking with your colleague Erin the other day and she said this is a marathon, it is. not a sprint. This is going to take quite a bit of time to help clean up. Yeah. For people watching, maybe they can't come today, maybe they haven't come this weekend, you all are coordinating volunteer efforts for the days and probably even the weeks to come, right? We are, yep. We're the volunteer hub of Otsego County. So uh, we're taking in volunteer names by email right now. Anytime volunteer opportunities come up, I'm entering them into a, like a Sign Up Genius database and people can, we're gonna send those emails out. They can sign up if it's something that they have time or the resources to do. So we're happy to take volunteers. Um, we are coordinating them, trying to be a little bit more organized about it because yeah. you know, we've had a lot of hands and, and we're so grateful for it, but we're trying to stay a little bit organized. Yeah, really, if people need help, they can come see you all at the E-Free Church. Absolutely. And they can come contact you all at the Otsego County United Way. Yeah, the clients know how to find us there and we're taking anybody that could need anything at all. So so please stop by, yeah. Yeah, yeah. any needs, any yep. needs. Yeah, absolutely. Megan, uh, Megan, Brian, thank you both so much for being with us. Yep. Again, I want to pop those immediate needs up again, just to take a second to sh sh go through these. Totes are a huge need right now. These are so people can gather their belongings. Gas cards, cleaning supplies, hand, face, body, cleansing wipes, first aid kits, food gift cards, work gloves, and monetary donations. Both the Otsego County Community Foundation and the Otsego County United Way have put up together special designated funds for you to help people impacted by this tornado. We have links for both of those on our website, 9 and 10news.com. There's a lot more ahead of this hour in this special edition of The Four, live from Gaylord. So stay with us. Welcome back to the special edition of The Four, live from Gaylord at this community continues to rebuild after the EF3 tornado ripped through here on Friday. Uh, after that tornado, there was about 6,500 people without power on Friday evening. Flash forward to Sunday evening, that was down to about three people. That's thanks in the part to the efforts of Consumers Energy and their contractors working to get people restored here. We have Carlin Smith here with us from Consumers Energy. That is impressive. I mean, Carlin, I was on the ground here on Saturday and I seen these power lines just mangled. There was a main transmission line that was brought down. How are you all able to mobilize so quickly and get these get this power restored before the weekend was even out? I would say two things. One, experience, and, and the second thing, um, numbers. So we were able to bring uh, around 250 people into Gaylord and mobilize that many people to help with the restoration efforts. And so when you have an army like that, it, it helps a great deal. But also, you know, these, these crew members are, are very experienced in storm restoration. Mm -hmm. You know, they've, they've done it in Michigan, but also have 
provided they've gone mutual to aid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've been in New York. They've been in Florida providing mutual aid um, to to other things. So they they have some experience with storm restoration, and and there's a process to do it. And uh, they were well organized, a good leadership team, and and they just set to work. And now, for the most part, the vast majority of people have power back now, right? That is correct. Yeah, there, there's going to be some isolated cases and some places that just aren't ready to receive power yet. And so, you know, over time, we'll be coming back to restore this one, then restore the next one and, until we get the whole town ready to go. Yeah, and like we talked earlier, this is definitely a situation that's a marathon and not a sprint. You know, not only were you all here on the ground working to restore power, Consumers Energy also did a lot this weekend just to make sure people were taken care of, too. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, you know, Consumers Energy has a triple bottom line philosophy of people, planet, and, and Michigan's prosperity. And, and a disaster like this is, there's a huge people element to it. And so we wanted to be on the ground uh, serving the people at Gaylord and letting them know that we, we really care and, and we really want to help you. So we did a, a an activation that we call it uh, uh, where we provided free food to any resident of Gaylord that wanted to stop by and we fortunately were also able to feed some of our crews and and then also some of the emergency uh, and first responders you know in the community so yeah. it was very heartwarming to be able to be a part of that experience you know you are a northern Michigan man you know you live here you're in this community when you came into town today what was it like for you personally to kind of see what's going on here and what's left. You know, the, the, the pictures don't do it justice and your news coverage has been outstanding and, and you know, I've been watching the news and, and looking at photographs, but but it just doesn't do it justice to see it. I mean, the thousand times I've driven down this road right in front of us yeah. and, and then to see it from this new perspective is, uh, is um, I, I, numbing. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's quite an experience and it's hard to put into words, but I um, trying to tell my family that you should see how bad this is. You yeah, know? It, it, it is devastating and it's going to take time this community group to rebuild, but now they have the power back thanks to the work you all did at Consumers. Yeah, correct. So, you know, it, it is going to be a long rebuilding process for Gaylord, but hopefully having power restored makes that process a little bit easier, makes it a little more comfortable for the residents of Gaylord while, yeah. they, while they work through this. Yeah, Carlin, thanks so much for taking the time to come down and talk with us. My I want to take a moment here to tell you about 211. If we can put that information up on your screen, if you are struggling and you're impacted by this tornado, whether you need help paying your rent, help getting a gas card, help with glasses, whatever that situation may be, if you dial 211, they are going to help connect you to those resources in the community to help. Again, that's 211. That number's on your screen. We've got a lot more ahead. Michael Stevens will be back with us. We're going to talk a little bit more about the damage we've seen with our own eyes as a special edition of The Four rolls on when we come back. Tornado warned storm right here for Otsego County. Clear 32 and murder tornado on the ground in the city. 1547. We have a major tornado strike here. Welcome back to this special edition of The Four. I'm Xavier Hershevitz alongside meteorologist Michael Stevens. We're here live in Gaylord after an EF3 tornado ripped through town on Friday, destroying homes, businesses, killing two people and injuring at least 40 others. We're outside the Goodwill here where you can see they put the caution tape up. This is a community, Michael, we've seen working to rebuild throughout the day and throughout the weekend. Yeah, they really have. And today I took a walk and what, what was really shocking about everything or just the community involvement was I took a walk just two blocks. We were kind of uh, in a hotel lobby writing yeah. the show for a little bit. And I was like, well, I'm going to take a walk to see kind of the path of the tornado on the northeast quadrant of Gaylord. And everyone was leaving water on the sidewalk. Everyone was leaving items on the sidewalk. And then they were bringing the branches and trees to the side of the road. People with trailers were just driving up, complete strangers, packing it up and taking it where they need to take it and then dumping it. Um, even a classroom, I believe it was Gaylord St. Mary's, was out there doing their thing yeah. even. So it was everyone is coming together very quickly in, in hopes of getting Gaylord back. I mean, you have to remember, this is the last week of May. We're going into Memorial Day weekend this upcoming weekend. And yeah. There's going to be a lot of hustle and bustle around Gaylord and everyone's coming together very quickly to get a lot of things taken care of. Strangers taking trees off of roofs, strangers picking things up and taking care 
Um, and you know, that's one last thing for people to worry about when they, some of them have to sort through what might not be left of their homes. What's left of really their entire lives right, exactly. when their homes are destroyed. And, and I think the thing to point out too is that even for those people that maybe those homes are intact, this right. is their community. It you is. know, this is their goodwill store. In fact, it's our neighbors. It's our neighbors. Michael, right across the street, you were there at the hot the plaza with Jimmy the Hobby Johns, Lobby, yeah. the Jeremy Johns, the Maurices. I got my eyes examined last at the SVS <laughs> just across yeah, the just street. Across street. Like the this is not just people's homes. This is Northern Michigan, Michigan is Michigan. impacted by this and, and what I loved on Friday talking to the troopers and deputies and first responders they weren't a lot of them I talked to weren't from Gaylord they yeah. were from West Branch from Houghton Lake from Traverse City from Petoskey everyone came down so quickly to help in any fashion that they could to help get Gaylord stabilized and like whoa what just happened okay this happened now let's start rebuilding and getting Gaylord back on its feet and everyone started reaching out communities leaving food water whatever it is on the sidewalks for first responders for drinks because they've been yeah. so busy up and down not only m32 but all over Gaylord. yeah on saturday i was at the emergency operations center where a gentleman came in he said i want to cook i want to cook can you take me to someone that'll tell me who needs to cook who i need to cook for there are so many people here in this community working coming out and just doing the work to help get this place rebuilt so many organizations, so many different people working to make this happen. In fact, we're joined live now by, we have Steve Hutchinson here with us. He's the general manager for Bill Marsh Ford here in Gaylord. And we also have Carrie Jo Stefanski. She's yes. the founder of Caring Home Youth Project. You all have really jumped into action here. Carrie Jo, start with you. You have been just working in what seems like nonstop to help people impacted. So that, that's what our community does. We jump in and help each other out. So my, my foundation works with homeless teens and young adults to start out with. Mm -hmm. um, this week actually was the Gaylord High School's Charity Week to give yeah, back to right, charities. Right, yeah. And they chose the Caring Home Youth Project mm -hmm. to give back to um, because obviously we work with teens and that. So their Friday afternoon, last day of Charity Week got canceled because weather pending. So today they had field day and they switched up really quick and we shifted gears on what was needed in our community. Yeah. So they've asked people to bring those things to be donated today. So we do, we, we are a great community Very and we work so. together and I wouldn't live anywhere else. These people, I, our family, yeah. everybody. And that's what we up. have seen here. You know, I've covered Gaylord for as long as I've been at nine and 10 here. and. I remember in COVID, I remember talking with you mm -hmm. in COVID and the response you all did. You all, you don't wait around, nope. you put your feet, you, you lace your boots up, you get out there <laughs> get and the you do done. what needs to be done. Exactly. And that's and that's thanks in part to the help of Steve here too, yes, right? Yes, absolutely. Bill Marsh has stepped up um, to be part of the community and help out. And I'll let Steve tell a little bit more about what the Marsh brothers are wanting to do going forward right yeah. now too. Uh, yeah, they're working on a couple of different things. Obviously they're still figuring out exactly which way to run and who needs the most help but mm -hmm. um, we have set up all the stores as just uh, distribution points for um, any donations whether it be monetary um, or you know toiletries like like people lost their entire like right. imagine coming yeah. home from work and nothing being nothing. there like yeah. everything your whole life was there when you left and now it's gone um, so like uh, distribution points so at Cal Casca Ford Chrysler store the TC campus as well as our store in Gaylord um, we're, we've got plenty of room, we got place to store stuff, so um, drop it off. Also, the Marshes uh, just let me know uh, a few minutes ago there could be matching up to $5,000 donations oh, that's awesome. as well. That's awesome. Um, so, that, and that's just the start, I'm sure. Uh, these people we work for are some of the best people I've ever met. They really yeah. are. Well, they're, this is their community too. Absolutely. They're members of the Northern Michigan community and we've all been impacted by this. I mean, it, me and Xavier were talking earlier. I mean, like we said earlier, this is, you guys are our neighbors. I've been coming up here since I was a little kid playing sports and coming to Gaylord as we traveled north, but we've always spent time, Big Brook Brewery or uh, playing putt-putt. Uh, it, it, it's, it's always been a gateway to the north. We always stop in Gaylord and the community's always been there for us as we come through. And what we've seen is Gaylord and the community, everyone's picking everything up and just moving forward and really doing it quickly. Uh, what what have you guys seen since the beginning of this? Obviously, there's just kind of a numbness that yeah, sits in when it is a little hits. bit. Um, um, I but think with, I'm since still, Friday, how's it been? I'm still at that level of um, boots on the ground, let's yeah. just get yeah. this done. Emotionally, I don't think I've dealt with it yet. Right, yeah, I get And that. we'll do that when it's all done and we're under control and yeah. we have things going. 
Um, one of the things today, I had I had breakfast at Bob Evans so this morning mm. for an hour by myself, which I knew I needed. Just kind of a mental release. And I listened to everyone around me, and there was chatter, and there was laughter, and there were people up to golf and things like that. And it just reminded me that Gaylord is a special place mm -hmm. that people come to be happy. Yeah. And that's what we've always been. We've been welcoming here to everyone that comes through, as you say. Yeah. Um, we have had outpour from downstate wanting to bring things up. We had um, connected with some people. We're coming up for Memorial Day weekend. What can right. we bring up to mm -hmm. you guys? You know, and we've told them we need totes for these families. Right. We need work gloves outside. We need wipes, clean up stuff because some of these people can stay in their home even though there's been damage, but there's right. cleanup to be done or they need to find their belongings. Yes. Yeah. So it. It's amazing. It For really people is. that are watching and they want to bring some of this stuff and, and, and drop it off and donate it, what do they need to do? So um, donations need to go to United Way. Okay. Any clothing items need to go to E-Free Church. Okay. Anyone that is in need of assistance need to call 211. That's very important because we are trying to centrally locate everything and then it goes out from there. We are all connected with 211. Um, we might have to bring some help in for poor Chris because she's taking all the calls. Yeah. But it helps to start there and then work with work all of us that. out to yeah. take care of things. Carrie, so. Joe, Steve, thank, thank you, so, you much. so much for being thank here you. and for what you guys are doing. I know it is making a difference in the lives of so many people here in Gaylord. So thank you both. And just like thank you mentioned, this community is rivaling together. and It's okay. lovely to see and it's just awesome to be a part of. So thank yeah. you for everything. Thank you. Thank you. If you want to learn more about the Caring Home Youth Project or to donate, you can head to our website, 9in10news.com. Again, if you need resources, that number is available, 211. We have a lot more still ahead this hour, so stay with us. Welcome back to the special edition of The Four, live here in Gaylord. All hour long, we've been showing you some of the devastation and talking about some of the needs here. Well, how can you help? Here's a big, big way you can help. Donate into the Otsego County Community Foundation's Special Tornado Relief. We have the Executive Director, Dana, here with us. You all jumped into action and made this, this fund readily available for people. It's really easy to donate on your website, right? Yeah, it's super easy at SeagoFoundation.org. It, it's our headline. It's the biggest <laughs> thing happening. Um, you can donate online. Also give you directions if you'd rather mail, mail a check, yes. For people that are gonna be donating to this, this is one of the, the quickest ways they can really make a difference for people here on the ground, right? Yeah, absolutely. So the way the Tornado Response Fund is set up, we're really focusing on three different areas. Um, immediate relief short-term recovery and then long-term rebuilding so okay. relief recovery rebuild are right. kind of the three things we're we're focusing on so within 48 hours of having the fund set up um, we were able to put 12 different families in hotels working with um, the the places that had availability um, we awarded a twenty thousand dollar grant to the refuge and this kind of focuses on that short-term recovery and the purpose of that grant is to make sure these displaced families can get housing and shelter for three months like get, let's get them safe right roof over their head and then let's start working on some other things and then we'll move into that long-term building a rebuilding phase um the habitat for humanity was supposed to have a golf outing yesterday it was one of their main fundraisers they do a lot of critical repair there's right. a lot of critical repair that's needed yeah. so we also just implemented a grant um, to habitat to humanity to make up for those things that they couldn't um, raise raise yesterday. I mean, that short term is a huge deal because yeah. you, you want to get people just back into their normal life because, yeah. one, you're already like, what do we do? Mm -hmm. Let's start with step one and get mm -hmm. people back into that routine mm -hmm. of just getting back into mm -hmm. a Monday, a Tuesday, a Wednesday, yeah. uh, rather than, you know, like, what do I do now? So yeah. it's that step, small step, like you said, absolutely. start little and then start and thinking long term. Absolutely. As you've heard from all these other guests, immediate relief, our community has been so generous. Yeah. So, so many different supplies have been donated to, to you know, do those immediate things. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like short-term recovery um, is going to be a big project. And then that long-term rebuilding, right. like yeah. we keep saying, you guys, this is a marathon. We're hardly Not at the sport. first water yeah. station yet, yeah. you know? So, yeah. I think what's important to note is when people are donating to this specific fund, this is making a difference. Not Instantly. I mean, quite literally, you're, it, it's not just instantly, but this is helping you all be ready for the next step and then the next step and right. the next step. Yep, yep. So, so again, we're managing the fun, um, but we really need to be in touch with our um, 
community partners, all those other nonprofits, some of them you've talked to today, they're the ones boots on the ground serving the people. Yeah. Um, so on Wednesday, um, we're doing an impromptu nonprofit exchange. Nonprofit exchange is something we do monthly. Mm -hmm. It's usually the second Wednesday of the month. We already did that. So we're gathering every, all the nonprofits um, for a Zoom. Um, so they can let us know what they're doing, what needs they're seeing. So then again, we can get that money back out from that fund out in the, out in the community. On a personal note, you hadn't made your way down this way until today, until this moment. Oh, What's it like for you to yeah. see this? Yeah, um, you're right. I, I have not been here yet. And um, I've seen all these pictures on Facebook. And, you know, to see the flag over there with the holes yeah. in person. It, it's very different here it, in the wake of Mother Nature. I, I still, I still can't believe this it, is this th is happening. That was the big thing when I arrived here on Friday. Is a lot of people were like, "What? What do you feel?" It's you instantly become humanized. I mean, you mm -hmm. don't realize mm -hmm. what just happened, mm -hmm. and then you see the scope of things. Mm -hmm. and it's like, "What do you do next?" Mm -hmm. And that's what you're trying to get that first hurdle is, mm -hmm. "What is next?" Mm -hmm. what um, is because next? you just realize. 150 mile per hour winds came through here and blew metal through a Little Caesars. It's, mm -hmm. It is very emotional. Mm -hmm. It is a very emotional mm -hmm. experience, but what has been the response is that community involvement, like you've said, that is, you know, getting over that step one, yeah. giving us that day to day, yeah. and then the long term of rebuild. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, the, the storm um, was so powerful in a destructive, destructive way. The aftermath of the storm, I mean, I think is going to be just so power and just a, a really beautiful way. That our community is coming together like it's just, it's, we're, yeah, it's, it's really special. Yeah. Not that I would wish this on no, anyone, no, but, totally but just the, the also, response, you know, the we don't have a choice is what we're going through and how we're handling it this is storm amazing. This may have destroyed homes. It may have destroyed businesses. It's even taken some lives and hurt people, but it has not stopped the resiliency right. of this community right. and really brought right. a lot of people close yeah absolutely yeah so put a button on it if you want to <laughs> donate head to our website we've got a link to the community Otsego County Community Foundation special fund they have set up specifically to help tornado relief Dana thank you so much yes, for being with us so thank and you head to our website 9 and 10 news.com you'll find a link there to the Otsego County Community Foundation's fundraiser specifically for tornado relief you heard it here this is going to not just help people rebuild immediately and help them with their immediate needs but it's going to help people in the days weeks months and, and possibly even years to come we're going to wrap things up we're going to wrap this hour up when we come back lots more still ahead stay with us Welcome back to this special edition of The Four. As we round up this hour, Michael, you know, both of us were really here in the first 24 hours yeah. of this event, and we saw firsthand the damage, the devastation, and and really the heartbreak. It's really, uh, I think me and Michael, we both keep saying this, it's hard to put into words really what is. this tornado did to this community. But, 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 we've Big seen but, yeah. within the last hour the way this community has come together and is so resilient through this. I mean, everyone is trying to do whatever they can. Michael, you stopped to help <laughs> yeah. two women that were, you I mean, know. It was just what you what you were, I was walking down the road and they were loading, I was like, I'm gonna get in here and help load they the trailer. They were two senior women that were they, loading up trees. trees. And into, it was just like, let me help you. Because yeah. I mean, that was the community, I mean, two days ago, M32 was ghost quiet. They just had crews working on power and lines. And you look at it today, it, it's like a Monday for Gaylord. They're it's, back to back to work, but also back to recovery and rebuilding. And they're getting yes. rid of trees. They had St. Mary, they had, they had school children out there raking and doing their part, and they were loving it. It's just great to see Gaylord back on their feet doing this right now. Because yeah. on Friday, I can tell you what, it was like, what just happened? And on Saturday, it was the same thing. So right. many people were numb seeing their their community, you yeah. know, places they go every day. Some people, it's their workplaces. Some people, it's their homes. It's their neighbors' homes. Yeah. Everyone was really numb. But today, everyone has laced their boots up and is really working really to get this place cleaned back up. Of course, we've told you about different ways you can help. We have so many ways to help on our website, 9and10news.com. But if you 
are someone watching from the Gaylord area and you need help, we're going to put that 211 number up again. That is going to connect you centrally to any of the resources, whether you need help with housing, money, food, totes, whatever it is you need, you're going to want to call that 211. That's going to do it for this special live edition of The Four. 9 and 10 News at 5 continues the coverage when we come back.